Welcome to the So You Want to Get Fat podcast. I am your host, not your typical chef, Brian Sow, and my co-host, Paulie, Frenchie, the animal, Denamiel. What's up, buddy? Good. We uh, we, we are bubbling today. We are bubbling, literally bubbling today. So we Tell filmed them. we filmed an episode of the podcast last night, just <laughs> spontaneously. weren't We're supposed weren't supposed to film one last night, but we did, and you decided to roll out the red carpet and order some epic Chinese food. It was absolutely delicious. Um, But before we get to the bubbling part, you and I both had MSG nightmares. Yes. What, like how, how do you and I, how how did our period sync up? (laughs) Right? Like, because you told me, you like, you saw me and you're yeah. I was like, what happened? So I woke up in the middle of the night sobbing because I was dreaming. I wasn't my wife- sobbing. I ain't no fucking pussy. <laughs> but I was fucking depressed, bro. I, I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, I woke up sobbing because my wife, in my dream, my wife wanted to divorce me. And I was like, we just had a baby. Well, why are you leaving me? Yeah, it was definitely depression from like horrible nightmares. Yeah. And then you wake up and you're like, you're taking that reality for what it is. And then you're like, oh. and I was like, I couldn't understand why I was so fucking sad. Yeah. And then this morning I was like, wait a second. That's yeah. fucking MSG. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> no, I don't know if that's oh, factual. It is. No, no Nightmares. Come on. I know it gives you like headaches and stuff. Yeah. Like that. But like, but then if you're not, if you have the headache in your sleep, you're in a, <laughs> you know, you're in a bad position and that's what causes like like you go negative, yeah. you go negative, yeah, and, that, it, and yeah. that induces the, the nightmares, and then the nightmares <laughs> induce the paranoia. So I, the- I woke up, and my wife ended up sleeping on the couch. So I, we had the the baby crib is on wheels, so she like wheeled it out of the bedroom. So we, she took herself. Yeah. She just laid yeah. an egg. Yeah, I laid a baby. Yeah. What, uh, dropped whatever. She just had a baby. Yeah, and not she, to disturb you. Yeah. Gets out of bed. <laughs> yeah, and wheels and out wheels the baby, the baby yeah. out. Yes, yes. Oh, that's yes. some old Asian shit. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck. So I saw her this morning, but my dream is that she wanted to divorce me. Hey, well, well so you must just, have picked up on her leaving yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> so I wake up and I see her on the sofa. And the first thing I say to myself hey, what did is I like, do? yeah, I was like, is everything okay? Like, did we, did like, did we have a night? Like, did I have a sleep? nightmare with her you know like sleepwalking but Mm -hmm. i uh, not sleep nightmare did i have a sleep argument right with her right no she was totally fine she was like i was like honey 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 and she's like "Mm, Mm -hmm. what's up i was like oh thank god (laughs) (laughs) anyway we ate some epic food but uh what ended up happening to us today paul um you tried to go healthy yes yes. and you brought me vegetables and now look what the fuck happened to me (laughs) everything inside me you're allergic to vegetables everything inside me is bubbling i mean i i I, went you went to the potty like three times already yeah yeah, i started my first round i dropped the hardest turd of my (laughs) life this morning the hardest chinese dumpling turd of my entire life this morning no and listen i was like I, I thought back to it. It was all carbs We just, and we meat. just lost Blondie as a yeah, viewer. It's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> There's other episodes. Uh, we 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 lost more than just Blondie. We lost a bunch of bunch of listeners with that. Oh man! But you know, I realized that last night's dinner was all meat and <laughs> and, and carbs and carbs. And I was like, no, 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 no! I cannot let you drag me down with you. And I decided. But why we are we suffering? To- we you see, I have delayed suffering. <laughs> and you give us immediate suffering. Well, that's that is that not a testament to how much more fiber we need in our diets? So I decided we were gonna have a nice veg forward meal today. I cooked some yu choy with chili crisp. He cooked and- oh, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? I did cook the veggies. I thought we were silencing our phones. I did silence, but Kids all come right, through right, emergency. Right. Okay, okay. I don't think any of your kids know you have a podcast. Yes. Or- the great thing about having a lot of kids, there's always, like, they don't feel the need, like, no one kid feels the need that they have to babysit me all the time, right? right? <laughs> and I guaranteed another kid from my old age. What do you mean you guaranteed another? Because I'll be, 
when oh shit yeah oh you're you're actually older than i thought i, <laughs> I was joking this this whole time i would be, throw numbers like 60 and 70. oh shit yeah. did we divulge this we might have to bleep that out well so we have a guest uh you know a guest introduce yourself if, if you don't mind just talking to the mic over there i am jacqueline denim yeah i'm paul's daughter <laughs> all right so Paul's daughter, Jackie, decided to surprise Paul, and we were in the middle of talking about uh, bubbling guts. Yeah. Yes. Yesterday, your dad decided to buy dinner, and it was filled with only carbs and meat. And I was saying how it destroyed me this morning, so I said to myself, we need to have a veg-forward meal. Veg-forward meal we did have. Actually, Jordan, roll the B-roll now, because... Frenchie over there was not very happy. But you ate it, and you liked I it. I ate it. I ate it. Yeah. But the... I had an allergic reaction to vegetables. <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, we, uh, I've made multiple trips and uh, well, yeah. you're, you're due for maybe um, two more. I'm like, I'm psych my cycle comes can right after Can you turn yours. your mic towards you? You always do this. Uh, no, I moved it. No, I moved it for her. You have to remember to move I it back. I, I can't. You're now a professional YouTuber. Not yet. Man. I am not professional yet. He's not. He's definitely not. Definitely not. All right. Well, uh, yeah. And then, uh, but... This all stemmed from us having MSG dreams last night. Yes. yes. And we had nightmares. We had nightmares. We were in the same place, maybe. And then the MSG. Like, no, not in the same place. Like, we weren't in the same place. We weren't bed. sleeping like, together. Yeah, no. Like, let's make that very clear. We were not in the Why? same Why? Are you bed. embarrassed? Are you in shame? You wouldn't. People are not supposed to know about your mistress. Oh. Yeah. You know, you got the you got the <laughs> wife in Jersey and he has the mistress in his city home. Yeah. That's me. He's the mistress. I'm the mistress. Anyway. Uh, have we started the podcast yet? Uh, I, I guess. We definitely <laughs> have by now. So we were talking earlier and we started to think of more scams restaurant yes. industry. Yes, I thought of a couple. I thought of a couple as well. Do you want to start? The tomahawk. Uh, tell us. Tell us why this is a scam. Why? Because you're paying a lot of money for a weight that a total weight you can't eat. Yes. And it goes by weight. Yes. You're weighing the bone. And they're serving you this big tomahawk, you know, this big Fred Flintstone. Are people going to remember who Fred Flintstone no, is? No, they're not as old as you. Okay, well. Uh, 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 how old? 66 this year? Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You funny. Funny, funny, funny. No. But it's 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 basically a rib steak with a bone on it. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I love rib steaks. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't want to pay for the weight of that bone. Right. Right. Yeah. So when... When they charge you, when the restaurant purchase this, purchases this steak, the price, the weight of the bone, right, the price of it is the same as the actual meat. Yeah. So and you can't eat the bone. Yeah. But we're trying to. I'm trying to dumb it so, down as so, much as so possible. So it's it's all for show. It's all for really. Show. It's like the stupid fucking gold salt bag gold steak. Now we don't there's need to just, go over there's that. There's no. Yeah. There's no function. Just does absolutely nothing. Jack. Shit. Yeah. I wanted to bring up how often tiger shrimp is swapped out for golf shrimp. So I'll say like golf shrimp on the menu, but they're actually giving you tiger shrimp. Okay, so Asian explain tiger the, shrimp. explain the difference. All right, so golf shrimp is from the Gulf mm -hmm. of America, right? By the you know, mm -hmm. by Mexico and all those or Louisiana, you right? Know, Bubba shrimp. Bubba gump shrimp, yeah, exactly. Bubba gump yeah. shrimp. Great movie, by the way. Shit. I want to watch that again. Um which is uh, very highly prized and revered for its clean flavor. And oftentimes, tiger shrimp is from cesspools in Asia. I love my Asians. Love you guys. But man, those those pools where they raise those shrimp, they're fucking putrid. <laughs> and uh, no, often... Do you have video to show them? Oh, yeah. You Jordan, gotta you got to pull some B-roll. That's going to cause... Chaos. Yes. If you show, if you actually show the reality of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a body. Where are you going? Got you, you got a phone call? Oh, busy. excuse us! <laughs> excuse us! Oh man! Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. You got a phone call? <laughs> Yay! Uh, you know what? I'm gonna look for it right now. Really? Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can. I don't think I'm in uh, my. I have seen these farms in person for myself well they're bottom feeders so they'll eat in anything. the land of the red i lived there for many years and i visited su the southern part uh and uh yeah they're fucking putrid so yeah and i'm not just saying the land of the reds shrimp farms are putrid they're all putrid any farm shrimp is fucking yes. putrid. once a luxury now an economy product shrimps 
tasty, low fat and cheap. But in Thailand, a massive shrimp industry has destroyed large parts of the country's mangrove forests. Conservationists are sounding alarms. Extensive what? use of chemicals okay, and untreated there we go. wastewater pollute large areas. Thousands of Burmese work for a pittance in the Thai shrimp factories. They live in appalling conditions. Dude, <sighs> nothing's sacred anymore, I'm telling you, nothing. You could create a scam out of everything. Yeah, I mean, that gives you an idea. Listen, I'm I'm all for people making an honest uh, day's living, but um, there's just, uh, listen, we're let's go back to the scam of it, okay? The scam is that they're taking a cheaper product and selling it as something more expensive. You know, the net, they're, they're saying that, this shrimp is a natural, wild-caught Louisiana Gulf shrimp, but they're substituting it with Asian farm-raised. And it's not cool. If you just say it's shrimp whatever and don't say it's Gulf shrimp, whatever, right? You but know, I've never, you know, I've never put in my descriptions the, the, the better quality shrimp that I use. Maybe you should. I should, right? Yeah, yeah, because I know for a fact you pick the best shit. Damn, that's something. A uh, note to self put that on the menu because i do mention the quality meat that we use so yeah it's obvious yeah, yeah. and all my meat comes from that one source so that makes it easy but the fish i've never i've never no i've done i do it for the fish i haven't done i haven't done it for shrimp i really should you should you should Damn. all right awesome well uh i did one you have another one about veal oh yeah yeah this was one that i didn't uh i didn't realize actually Ooh, i didn't know this, this one this one's one bad this one's bad. It's it's I've I haven't seen it done in a very long time, but I remember my father always being suspicious about ordering veal at another restaurant. Hmm. Always like telling me, "Oh, this is not veal." I'm like, "What is it?" Pork. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you know, as a kid, I didn't mind. It tasted right. good, yeah. right? And because pork tastes fucking good, but it's definitely <clears throat> not the same price point of veal, right? You know. So my father would always like, oh shit, this is not, like he would be able to recognize it. Yeah. And as an adult, I've never been scammed by it, mm -hmm. but I do remember that being a scam. Right. Right. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Very similar flesh color, very similar texture. I think the giveaway would be maybe the gelatin content, the tackiness of the protein. And right. Veal will be, you know, it's a it's a underdeveloped but, cow but, but, essentially. But imagine but, a veal parm, like a real. Right. 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 Uh, veal cutlet parm, yeah. like with the pork, like that's gonna be really hard. It's already you're masking it so well. Yeah, but I guess I'm referring to something like uh, braised veal. It'll be, I think it would be pretty easy to tell. Yes, because there's a significantly for more us it'd be very easy because we are if we because we can recognize the size of it right. too. If it's like a shank or something like yeah. that, or. I'm telling you, the problem is, is the, the, the lean meats. Mm -hmm. It gets harder and harder. Yeah, I think you and I would have a hard time to tell yeah, too. Like a scallopine. My other scam, I think most people know about this. It's pretty widely known at this point, is uh, red snapper. When they say it's red snapper, let me, let me put it this way. If you go to a restaurant and you're surprised they have red snapper on the menu, it ain't red snapper. I, you know how I know I've never been scammed? I don't fucking order red snapper. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, what do they normally uh, sub the fish for? I mean, any type. Most fishes, they'll sub for fish, this one particular. Fishes. Now, let's let's digress here. F is it fish or fishes? The substitute? Yeah. It's a fish. It's a specific breed. I know, but like yeah. the plural of, of the word fish. Is it correct or not to say fish oh, or fishes? I think you're right. I think it's just fish, right? They're both right. Oh, really? Yes. Really? So it's fish, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. The difference in fish and fishes, the plural of the both plurals, <laughs> fish and fishes, it's the different. It's either one category of fish or several categories of fishes. Just blew my mind, buddy. Yeah. So the more you know. The more da -na -na -na. <laughs> <laughs> You just dated yourself with that one Fuck! too. <laughs> Can you let people know what is a fish commonly used to substitute many other fishes? 
Did I use that correctly? Yeah, I'm still stuck. <laughs> I'm, I'm still, I'm like, spell check. My spell check's a little slow. <laughs> What's the dial up? Every time, oh, yeah, yeah. every time that I'm thinking there should be like a dial up sound. <laughs> Can we do that, Jordan? Can we do that? Just like when, when Frenchie's thinking, you just like, have the dial up sound. The dial up sound. Dial -up sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, you tell us. You tell us what you think is the most popular substitute. Tilapia. Yes. Or uh, swai. Okay. And, and and tell us why tilapia is such a bad fish. Okay. First of all, there are very there are some good uses of tilapia. Let me let me start with this. There are poor areas in the in the world rather that they need a fast source of protein. And tilapia is one of those fish that if you throw into the water anywhere, it will grow and it will grow plenty and it will give you lots of meat. So in that application, it's an amazing product. And where do they fatten them up? Not only are they bottom feeders, they literally eat anything. Anything. Doo doo. Yeah, doo doo. They will eat the doo doo. And uh, a lot of companies use tilapia to clean cesspool yeah. type scenarios. Yeah. And then they will sell you that same fucking fish. Uh, is that factual? Yes. <laughs> I saw it on Dirty Jobs. <gasps> uh, Jesus Christ. That's I, He's a hero. Oh, yeah. Mike Rowe? Yeah. Hell yeah. Love that guy. He's a fucking hero. He really shows the value in, like, the everyman. Mm -hmm. the, the, literally the dirty jobs that, like, if they don't get done, society cannot Stops. function. Yeah. A lot of people have forgotten how valuable um, dirty jobs are. You would... You would say that it's the beginning of, it's the beginning of society mm -hmm. to have those responsibilities because yeah. without that, that's the downfall. Yeah. Like, like the dirty jobs of the sewers, our water, our electric, all of that. There are a lot of dirty jobs, and dirty jobs also as in dangerous. Right. You know. Right. Because like, it's a dirt. It's a dirty thing yeah. to be dead. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. <laughs> I mean, our job is tough, I would say, but I don't think it it helps society function like some of these jobs that Mike Rowe covers. No, no, no. Yeah, we we offer a luxury product. Uh, it's a luxury. Yeah. We, you could eat, you know. Um, it's hard work, but it is not essential. You can eat water and bread for the rest of your life and survive. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, ever since we did that Guga video, uh, you know, we collabed with him on his channel, but we also put out our own video. Uh, talking about a certain scam involving dry aged beef. But uh, you guys have since been asking for other scams, and those were just some we could think of. If we think of more, I think we also said that we wouldn't talk about more scams, but yeah. here we are. I mean, I think this is enough, like mentioning, like if, but the deep dives, like the whole videos, like Google did, like, no, let's not do that. Yeah. We could bring them up. And if, if our fans do want to know more, then maybe if like if enough fans ask for it, then maybe we can do yeah. something about Speaking it. Speaking of fans, you know, you know, a lot of our fans are not subscribed. How is that? Frenchie, can you please tell them to subscribe? Why subscribe. are you not subscribed? Subscribe. 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 Please subscribe. Don't unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do a lot to a lot of my emails or texts or everything like that? What's that? Like if I'm in a group chat or something, yeah. I literally write unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> That's another douchebag move, people. <laughs> Uns or 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 I've been in conversation. And Bl oh, Blondie's seen this. Uh, like I'll be like this, and and she can tell she's like focus because like like this conversation yeah, yeah, it's obviously just, boring. Yeah, yeah. And I'll go unsubscribe <laughs> and walk away. <laughs> In the middle Do you of actually say say it out oh, loud? Oh yeah, unsubscribe and like in the middle of a conversation and people like talking to me and I will literally turn my head and walk away. And she, I, I, can't, I don't do it anymore right. because I'm with Blondie now most yeah. of the time. But if I was by myself and I'd be like at a function or something, people talking, I'd be like, <laughs> I just walk away. Well, you haven't walked away from me, but we have had many conversations where I'll be trying to make a point and then you'll just start a completely different conversation. Speaking of which. <laughs> <laughs> that bubbling might be coming to the surface. 
or or down the drain. Do you want to hear something funny? Yeah. I started feeling it too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no, we're gonna have oh, to man. pause the podcast. <laughs> Uh, but you, I'm, I'm, I, today I've declared that's your toilet. Okay. And I'll go to the next one. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, There's nothing worse than sitting in someone else's stink. Yeah, that's true. I, I give you that. Well, you're the one that fucking burped in uh, one of the previous podcasts and blew it in my face. Remember after we went to Han Song Tang? Oh, uh, me, you too. <laughs> you too, honey. I don't know if you guys remember from the Feastie Boys episode, the first Fe- Feastie Boys episode. Uh, we do got some merch coming of Paul, where it says Han Song Ting, but with the Chinese letters, and it says handsome thing underneath. It's in the works, it's coming. Uh, all right, remember our buddy Jocko Willink? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, shut your Shut your old pie pie hole. Hole. I, I watched one today, yeah. dude. And he's, I, and I love the way he does. He's yeah. got the side perspective, yeah. black and white. It is powerful. It's powerful. It's fucking well, powerful. I saw another one today. And uh, I guess in some odd way, it kind of connects to the theme yep. of today. But yeah, let's uh, let's check it out. He has diarrhea. <laughs> Just get started. Just get started. The longest time in the world is the hesitation between thought and action. Well, at least it has the potential to be the longest time. It can actually be forever. Forever. How fucking powerful is that? Dude, look at that fucking, fucking vein on the <laughs> second side of his. <sighs> How powerful uh, is that? Einstein. His theory was, was that time is flexible. Time is pliable. And to prove that, beyond what Einstein said, one second can actually become an eternity. That's how much it can flex. You can hesitate for one second to get started on something. A, a workout, a project, a task, something that you know you should do. You can hesitate for one second. That one second of hesitation, all of a sudden it turns into five seconds. Yep. And then 10 seconds. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I definitely have been hesitating to uh, go Me to too. the gym. <laughs> I was going pretty consistently not too long ago and then- uh, Don't fucking blame me. No, I wasn't gonna blame oh, okay. you. Okay. But now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, I think you had something to do How? with it. Then, then should we, you wanna start going to the gym? Oh, should we? Should that I be? need to go to the fucking gym. You my my doctor's gym. like, you fat fuck, <laughs> go to the gym. <laughs> All right. How Did about I that? ever tell you the story? Not my existing doctor, yeah. but my old doctor. Please I, do tell. I was looking for a new doctor. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you didn't even tell the story. <laughs> I'm already laughing. <laughs> so, yes, I was shopping around for a new doctor. This, we're talking decades ago. Okay. So you got to assume like it's it's it. This was Paul, you know, you know, lean, mean, fucking cocky and yeah. whatever. And... <laughs> <laughs> and Jordan, can you pull up the B roll of of uh, Frenchie on Beat Bobby Flay? That this is the Frenchie we're talking about right now, right? The cocky. Decade well, this story's ago. this story's like way before oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But regardless, you were still cocky then too. Oh so yeah. I just want people to have a visual in their head <laughs> of cocky Frenchie, the um, Frenchie I fell in love with. Okay, let me get back to my okay, story okay, because. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Jocko's waiting too. Definitely, definitely shopping for a new doctor. I don't know why. I like, and then, and then, I think my first wife mentioned like, "Oh, you should go see our. We have the general practitioner. It's like in the same office. Go to him." Mind you, she should have mentioned to me what he looked like. <laughs> what? Wait, wait. Where is this going? <laughs> what does what he has? What he looks like have to do with I anything. go into the office okay. and he comes. It was a he was a little person. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, <laughs> go on. And 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 then he literally came into the office with. By the way, before you go any further, I just want you to realize there's there are many little people listening to yeah. this right now with their hands hovering over <laughs> the keyboard. Well, when- I didn't say midget. <laughs> I said little people. Go on, go on. But you know, you'd think like like old school, like old people like don't know how they speak. Like I'm one of those old farts that doesn't some like I had to learn 
to be woke, you know? Yeah, right, right. It, it didn't come natural. Right, I have, right, right. I have to like, <laughs> had to study at yes, this shit, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. You but, had to actively work on it. I have to actively work yes. on it, you know? Yes. My father didn't, Yeah. you know? But like, you know, my shock was like, you know, I was like, I was obviously, I have no fucking poker face. Right, right. Never. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was totally fucking apparent to this guy when he showed up. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, I was like, and and he brought a stool, a step stool with him to be able to manage because he had to adapt. It, he didn't have a, a dedicated office. It's like whatever it comes. So he had to like adapt to the situation. And I was like, fuck. You know, and it was like, and he's like, and then, and then, and then he obviously picked up on it, but instead of getting mad, it was like, okay, you got one on me. You're a fat fuck. <laughs> oh my God, really? He said that? Yes. And I said, and, and right away, I was like, we are going to be best friends. <laughs> and I had the same doctor forever until he, I think he moved back. He actually, he got changed practices and everything and didn't take my insurance. But like, I had him for like, he, like, he was like the family doc. I like, I had him for like the longest time until like, I couldn't have him anymore. But we became like really good friends. Wow. He actually was one of the few people that got me like when I was going, like he could tell that my marriage, like, like he was a general practitioner. He yeah. didn't have to delve, right. delve into my psyche or anything right, right. like that, but he could physically see there was something wrong right. with me. You were saying that this was a couple decades ago. So this is when you were young and cocky, but you were fat back then. So you were fat, then got fit and got- Oh, I, I yo-yoed my whole life. Oh, okay. I got skinny for when I had to do something. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Like Elvis. Right. Elvis was never skinny. He was right. always fat. He only got skinny to shoot a movie or to do a concert or right. stuff like that. Right, right. Okay. I'm, the, I'm the Elvis of chefs. <laughs> But then, oh yeah, but God. then when I met you, then I got yeah. really into fitness, right, like right. every day. Right. And, and I had the luxury of time. Right. Because, you know, like being healthy is a it's, luxury too. It's a commitment. Then. You have to yeah. like, so yeah. once you make, yeah. uh, okay, I digress. But this- Andy Elliott, six pack abs to work at his company. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But, just... but meanwhile, but, but I'm telling you, but like, again, a no poker face, right? Mm -hmm. And blunt, like, you know, blunt reactions and he fucking picked up on it and put me in my place and then we became like the best of friends and he was my doctor forever and he like he had just gone through a divorce too and oh. and he was like so he was picking up on my vibes and everything he knew and like he's the one was his that like ex-wife a little person too i have no clue i don't oh, ask well, I'm, now i'm curious no i'm fascinated by this doctor that's my problem i don't ask about other people's lives I'm, I'm so, i do you do. You're very good at it. I'm picking up on it. I'm learning. I actually like to know about the other fucking person every now and then. You know what I mean? Like, I want them to feel loved in that conversation once but in a anyway, while. But anyway, but you know what? Most people, <clears throat> like, their gut reaction to me is, like, not good. But then within a few minutes, they love me. Right. Right? right. So, right. like, I, I come off like an asshole. Yeah. But then you you just give me a fucking chance. Yeah. Like if you don't fucking like blow me off right away, then you end up loving. There is actually, I literally saw a comment today in something we filmed where someone said that like, I really hated Paul initially, but I, he's really grown on me. <laughs> yeah, so. I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, well, I mean, that's, that was me with you. <laughs> but all my best friendships are like that startup. Yeah. Like my best friend growing up was like some guy, uh, was like a fucking fist fight. Like, like me getting to a fight with this guy and we had a a fist fight to end all fist fights. We destroyed the classroom cafeteria, swung each other over tables and things like that. And then ended up being like, like that day we were like the best of friends, inseparable and like through thick and thin. So. Or thick and fat right or now. <laughs> Listen, and listen. I oh, ain't, you want to know? The, I ain't fucking. You know. You want to talk about me making fun of small people? I've shrunken over two inches. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Uh, like solid fact. Um, I used to be like five, close to five ten. Yeah. I am closer to five seven now. Really? Yes. So the fat is weighing you down. The fat <laughs> is the weighing me down. Yeah, yeah. The the doctor said actually, if you actually lose weight, you could 
bounce back an inch. I swear to God. You said I, that? Yeah. Oh my God. I have no, I have nothing. I have no rebuttal. I have nothing to say to that. How can you? It's, it's a poly. <laughs> it's appalling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it a poly or is it appalling? <laughs> oh God! All right, dad jokes aside, let's go back to Jocko. Yeah, do you see? This is a scary man. Yeah. Okay, it's one thing. It's one thing to be a big man. Yeah. It's another thing to be a trained big man. Big man. Yeah. It's another thing to be to have a an intelligent trained. trained disciplined big, big man. man this is a this is a man who does not need to speak a word yep and you know everything about him. yeah yeah He's, like i fucking love this guy like you know this is like this is like there's a there are men's men yeah and then there's this yeah <laughs> this is like this is the one percent alpha yeah Def, like all speaking all of, of one percent and the number one this today frenchy is technically episode number one because all the episodes up until now i've been, I've been so point this point that i, I don't yeah, know you, uh, i'm le I letting being, you sort that out i was i was being indecisive and then i was just like this will be the first episode no this will be the first episode why, why? This will be because you can't pick one of your kids they're all so good they're all so good i love all my children what's the common thread <laughs> <laughs> and then just like that you drifted into the eternity zone. One second became an eternity because something that was gonna happen is now never gonna happen, ever. Damn. Why is that? Because you hesitated. Fuck me. You hesitated. So don't take that chance. Instead, take action. Take action. A body in motion tends to stay in motion. A body at rest oh. tends to stay at rest. You've had enough damn rest. Fuck, Fuck me! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 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 All right, everyone, in the let us know in the comments. Do you want to see Frenchie and I go to the gym together? Oh no, no, no! We can't have that visual yet. <laughs> we cannot. No, no, come on! No, that's dude. That's content. That's what the people no, no, want no, no, to no, no, see. No, no. Two out of shape chefs trying to get in shape, no. hurting themselves. <laughs> It's not like you and it's I. It's not, you know, get jiggy with it. It's going to be get jiggle with it. No, I'm not fucking doing that for Why? the camera. Come on. No. You already have that horrible video of me that looks like a, I'm like a pig in a blanket with French's mustard on. <laughs> He's talking about the compliments to the chef. T. Jordan, can you pull up the clip oh, that we made? People love that shirt. Yeah, but it's like literally it's like. 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck that. I'll, I'll, don't worry, guys. I'll, I'll get Frenchie to work no. out and film it. We'll, no, we'll no. do it. Dude, I do miss, you know, in shape Frenchie. Uh, listen, I think, I don't think you and I need to get like jacked, but certainly just some regular. Oh, I don't need exercise. to get jacked. Yeah. Uh, just some regular. I need to exercise. lose weight. Yeah. End of story. <laughs> Listen, I got the, you know how fat people have big calves and big legs? Oh, yeah. we have that already. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't need those. Don't need those. You know, I still got the shoulders and that. Like, no, I just need to lose fucking weight. And it'll be perfect. Okay. Right. No need to right. get, you know. Right. We don't need to go back to the days of testosterone and HGH. And, oh, God, I miss HGH. Do you so, remember when I was texting you about it? Because you were telling me about how much you liked HGH. Yeah. And then I was like. Oh, I want to try HGH. And then you sent me, do you know what you sent me back? No. A picture of Bernie Williams' head. Of who? Bernie Williams, the baseball player. <laughs> and you were like, do you want this to happen to your head? <laughs> and it did stop me. Well, I stopped asking you. Yeah, but yeah. that that's what, like Stallone, you know, yeah. Stallone is on it. That's like, you know that, because on HGH, everything grows. Yeah. Like your organs, like your muscles, everything grows. Yeah. So your organs grow, your head, everything, f except for your dick, guys. Because <laughs> I already have a big head. I have a very, I have an, a large head. Do doesn't equal large brain, unfortunately. No, but, but it like, but it like, it's not that your head grows, right. but every single muscle right, right. Every in your- Every fiber, right, right. No, yeah. every fucking muscle grows. Yeah. So imagine all these muscles growing like all your jaw muscles yeah. growing and it gives you like that fucking big like all these every all these muscles grow 
everything grows. Even the muscles on top of your belly, you see them, like you see those old good dudes at the gym, they got that big beer belly, but it's muscle, but it's like a belly. Yeah. Like that's that's HGH and that's test and all that stuff. Oh. Yeah. Because the way you talked about it made me want to try it so yeah, bad. Yeah, but I didn't abuse it. Yeah. I didn't abuse it. And then I got it because I got the motorcycle accident. Right. I had broken both my hands. Oh, I didn't know that. And well, I didn't realize it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's what I tell people. I broke my hands on a motorcycle accident. But really, uh, I got sideswipe, um, a cab yeah. sideswiped on my motorcycle. And I can't do motorcycles. I and do I got so pissed that I punched through his windshield <laughs> and broke my hand. I thought you said both hands. Uh, yeah, I did, broke hand, both hands. I like I, were, I was in such adrenaline yeah, that I yeah. didn't feel anything. And I went to dinner, and then all of a sudden my hands were like were blowing up like this. I was like, "Oh shit!" All right, well there you go, people. Don't do HGH unless you want everything to grow except for your penis. Except for your penis. <laughs> and that's why I didn't get that myth that like your penis like you shrinks yeah. and everything shrinks. It's because oh, everything because looks everything grows, everything grows around it. <laughs> But yeah. if you calculate it right. and you get down to oh. zero body weight, oh my god! Right yeah. now, your dick is gonna look bigger. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. they they say for every thirty pounds of fat you lose, you gain an inch. <laughs> this is true, by the way. I did lose fifteen pounds, and I so you I, must I, you should have gained a half an inch. Yeah, I, I well, I I did the other day. Was In like, your world, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> Oh, oh my I'll god! I'll take anything I can get. I'll uh. get. I want millimeters back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get. I'll, I'll take anything back. Oh my god! Oh, you good? I was afraid this podcast we, was going to be weak. No, I was afraid this podcast wasn't going to be long enough because I didn't. Pick, <laughs> I didn't prep too much stuff. But uh, and we haven't even started. And, and we have. We only did one clip. Okay. Yeah, I, we don't have too many clips today. Um, do you have um, uh, fan questions again? I do. So we're going to do a lot of fan okay. questions. But before we do that, I just wanted to show the audience. Wait, that. what the fuck happened to our fan art? We didn't have get anything yet. Yeah, yeah. Where's our fan art? Where's, look, look at my wall. Look at his wall. <laughs> look at my wall. Look at his wall. <laughs> look at my wall. Look at his wall. I want some fan art. And I'll position it. I'll, yeah, pu yeah. I'll put one here. And I'll put one here. And make sure you make Frenchie look fat. No. <laughs> go go back. Google search the, the Google search the images of Frenchie. And uh, skinny, not skinny, but young. I was never skinny. I was always like, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. You're always thick. I was always thick. a thick boy. Big boy. All right. I, I wanted to show you a picture of this dish that I saw on social media today. Oh fuck me. Um, You're an asshole. <laughs> I mean, uh, this looks like a uh, grilled cock. Yeah. And um, where did you find us? Whose website? It's from your Instagram. Ooh, fuck your you. Your fucking restaurant. Who were you having take the photos? I don't know. This looks like a fucking seared cock. What is wrong with you? And Why would you let this go And I go don't up? even know. We don't even present it that way. You I don't. don't. I don't understand what happened there. Yeah. Where's the sauce? I, there's no sauce. You, it's not sliced. It's not. It's uh, yeah, because I know it's not sliced because it looks like a fucking grilled cock. It does. It's still up though. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see me rushing to take it off. But that's like, because we discovered together <laughs> this picture. You could have, you know, had someone in the shot pouring the sauce so you see the steak au poivre sauce. Like, you know, it's sliced so you see the medium rare, but no, you-, you, you This this is all you doing should have, could have, would have, right? Yeah. I wasn't involved with this. <laughs> You're the owner, chef of La Ravage. And I know, and you showed it to me. That's when I saw it yeah, first. That, well, because I got pissed for you. I'm mad for you. Well, and why do I keep greeting your customers? Fucking fans of the show show up over here. Right. They say, I'm, I'm here because of Guga, or I'm here because of oh, Pro Chef Reacts, or right. I'm here. And then is, Fr is Frenchie, is Frenchie here? here? Nope. And, and then Tebow, his wonderful fucking GM. I, more than likely, I am here. Yeah. And you know that I'm here too. <laughs> but he knows if I'm like, not to leave me. Not to not to bother me. Yeah. He's so used yeah. to def of to deflect right. that it's like an automatic, right. Right? right? So I'm never here. So this well, is not, no, it's not that I'm not here, but I'm busy. I'm right. working or this right. like that. Or I, I could be. Yeah. That doesn't mean I can't come over. Right. But he always like deflects. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. Well, his because, default. Because, but let's let's let. Well, tr truth be told, it would be nonstop. You know yeah. because. 
I love our fans and I'm going to love these new fans. They're going to come up on the priority list. I mean, but this is a business that's been in operation for 40 years. Yeah. I mean, so there's you know a, lot a lot of people, people yeah. that want to see me yeah. constantly. Yeah. Like it was a problem. Yeah. It was a yeah. problem yeah. <laughs> until I figured a simple fucking solution. When I used to leave, I used to like, I used to come out with like my chef jacket. It was very fucking obvious that <laughs> I was a chef. <laughs> Surprisingly, I used to, because our, ch like, unfortunately the kitchen was not, is not connected to where we changed. So right. you have to go kind of through the dining room, yeah. not really but take access to be able to change right. out of clothes. So like I would come out and people, oh, the chef, like, and I would have, and yeah. I would waste like 20 to 45 minutes to an hour after I was done cooking, before I could get home. I was right. like, oh, I can't do this every night. Yeah. I can't do this. Yeah, yeah. So I would literally have a change of clothes in the kitchen <laughs> and change and and just dart, dart through out. and dart out through a dining room. Oh man. And surprisingly, it's like <clears throat> it's like the Superman. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's Clark Kent. No, no, it's Superman. No, it's Clark Kent. Like people would not. Tebow comes to me. Yes, he doesn't come to me. He, he doesn't comes to go you. to the owner of the fucking restaurant. He goes to the owner's best friend who is working on a completely different business <laughs> and asks me to go greet the customers. And I do. Not, not I greet. Do. He does that. Interact. 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 Which I gladly but do. But you got to give the people. Come yeah, on. Yeah. You got to give them. If they make the effort to come, yes. they need to get that little VIP. Yeah. You, you know, you know, Frenchie, if People made the effort to come. They need a little bit of the VIP from I, the owner. I, I just said, oh. <laughs> anyway, listen, listen, in, in all if, seriousness, in all, uh, if I'm here, I yeah, will, yeah. you know, in, in all seriousness, listen, Tebow actually wanted us to relay this message. Yes. If you come here because of the podcast or because of Guga mm -hmm. or because of my channel, Please let them know in the reservation notes and or, or, or when you come in. It come in. When you come in. Not when you leave. Yeah. When you come in. Because Tebow really wants to do it up for you. You know, yeah. give you a little extra something. You want to yeah. make it extra special for you. They the you know, they Tebow really does take pride in providing good service. He's he's a wonderful yeah, he, GM. He did he it's he did <clears throat> make it like he did make take the time to mention that to me. And like he was like, Oh, it would be nice if they would like they're being too polite. Yeah. Like these 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 people are too nice. Yeah. Like they're like it's on their way out. It's like no. Like don't be afraid to be forward and to say why you're there. Yeah. Yes. So please do that. All right. At, at my shop, you don't need to do that because like you'll see me like literally behind a glass counter. Oh, you so. could have you could have gone no because we take everybody, we treat everybody with excellence no matter what. Yeah, that's a given. No, fucking, it's not. Fucking prick. No, it's not, and All you right. know that. <laughs> Speaking of which, speaking of burnt cocks. Yes, because that customer that walks in that's already grumpy. Oh, I don't like this table. I don't like that table. No, no, I don't like. Yeah, we're, that person's getting a lot of the same that's quality a great service. Great voice. That's a great like old Karen voice. Yeah, yeah, it was very. Good. But that's who it is. Impress yeah, that is who it is. Uh, speaking. Do you know? <gasps> Back to my dad. This is a great story. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe I remember this. <laughs> So my dad. He's so happy. Oh yeah. So my dad. <laughs> oh my god, this is genius. Oh, and he used to make it, it. He would, and he. It was not. He wasn't trying to be funny, or he wasn't yeah. trying. He'd just be like, not, I'm not having it. Basically, like, and and he wouldn't get mad. He wouldn't just. Uh, <laughs> but like, sorry, like, I'm feeling some real bad bubbles right now. <laughs> you too. Yeah. Oh yeah, me too, man. <laughs> So my dad would like, he would love to like, he would love that that time slot yeah. where he would be, he would take the maitre d' position and sit people down at the tables and everything like that. He really enjoyed that. But then you always have these people like, oh, I don't like that table. Oh, I don't like that table. So what he would do if like the person says, oh, I don't like that table, he would show them a second table. Okay. If at the second table, they didn't like it, he would like, okay. He would, he would, he would walk away and leave them standing there, walk away and just go on to the next one. And those people would be like stranded in the dining room. Like, well, what do we do now? And he'd be like, oh, but I gave you choices. I like, I like, I don't know what, and, he, and he'd be taking care of somebody else. It's like, and then he more than, more than likely would fill up those tables. And then they would be like, but like, he's like, oh, but I showed you two tables. They're, they're not available anymore. <laughs> oh, you and just like that. <laughs> Holy he would shit! Do it that is all the time. That is so gangster. Fuck yeah! Uh, but he, but he used to do it all the time, 
And he, you know who he did it? Do you remember who fucking Ricky Lake was? Oh my God. He did that to he Ricky Lake. He did that to Ricky Lake. Like she kept complaining that yeah. it wasn't, it was packed. It was yeah. packed. Yeah. And you, and she, and you should be lucky pre theater right. to get a fucking table. All right. I'm sorry. It's, I got to add, I got to add something. This is what's going to happen from now on. Every time we tell a Marcel story, there is a wonderful photo of Marcel in the dining room. We're going to get some B roll footage. Okay. And every single time you tell a photo <laughs> of, of of uh mars about marcel we're just going to put his image up and play that snoop dogg song with dr dr dre and superimpose oh, some so thug gang- life glasses he was so gangster he is that is thug life right he there. was so gangster Fuck but he yeah. did that Tariq lake and then she's like it's like uh, like what happened like he would literally abandon her <laughs> and she was like stuck like walking yeah. around in the dining room with no options left yeah. and and then and then come back and he was like but I showed you two tables and that's it. We don't have any more. Yeah. And would would make sure to make fast action of filling up those tables right, right away. Right. Because people are waiting online. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. What 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 would normally happen with those customers? They just charge out pissed off and or end up waiting or they end up mixture. waiting longer. Oh fuck. They have to wait for the next table. Yeah. So for usually no, I like you don't abandon them. They have reservations yeah. and everything like that. Right. But they give you grief. Right. You know, cause all the tables are pretty much the same downstairs. Yeah. And they keep thinking they're going to get a better one. Right. So it's like, no. Except for table one, where we hang out. Yeah. yeah. But those that table has its inconveniences too. Right. Yes. Yes. You can it only does. do service from one side. Right. Right. So so it's it's a great it's a nice table. It's positioned right. nicely, but it's got its inconveniences as well. Yes. So right. each table in the dining room, I like the, are, are all nice, but they all have their pros and right. minuses. Yeah. It, it again, it's it's your reasoning for not liking it is yours right you know right. Uh, another, another person will be like yeah i love this day but there's nothing yeah. wrong with it yeah. and listen uh at the end of the day it's new york city real estate be fucking yeah. expensive and you gotta maximize and, that shit and we couldn't waste time right. so my father was i was like they're they're wasting his time i gotta i gotta sit all these people down right. we don't have time to waste you right. don't like it okay and what, sorry what, uh, so actually this is a good thing because our audience seems to love the behind the scenes stuff what does that mean wasting time why is it wasting time like what what is he trying to accomplish there? We, he wants, to, because especially for us, yeah. in, we're in a theater district, right. we literally fill up the whole dining room within 15 minutes. Right. Like everybody walks in. Right. Uh, and within that window of 15 minutes, right. because they all want to leave for that eight o'clock show. Yes. Okay. So before you go on any further, I just want to, because some people don't understand that concept of like, why is it bad to have a full dining room all of a sudden because you are getting all the food orders at all the at same the same time. time and your grill or your your stoves or your fryers can only are, accommodate can only accommodate so much so then it becomes a fucking war you know it takes a real skilled person yeah. to make sure all the medium rares and medium wells and all all that stuff is going out properly consistently clean all now that imagine stuff imagine yeah you show up at six o'clock yep. for an eight o'clock show. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. That's two hours, right? Is it in the kitchen? Is it, do you have two hours? No. No. Yeah. Six. You have to sit all the people down. So best scenario, those 15 minutes, I said, you sat everybody within 15 minutes from six to, because they all show up at six o'clock or a little bit lurdy, there's a little window, right? Do they order food the second they sit at the table? Right. No. No. You gotta bring them. The, you gotta bring them the menus. You gotta order their cocktails. Like what? Even at your bread. best best scenario, yeah. fifteen minutes later after they read the menu, yeah. and ordered cocktails and everything, it's almost a half hour later. Not, maybe not. I'm exaggerating, but it's at least fifteen it twenty could, minutes. It, it can, can be, be a half an hour it later. It can be a half yeah. hour later. Yeah. Okay, so now it's <clears throat> six thirty. Okay, all those tickets would drop at the same time between 6.15 and 6.30. Now you're talking about 120 people coming in at the same time. Now, are they eating at eight o'clock? No, they have to be at the theater at eight right. o'clock. Right. You know, is the theater outside the door? No, they need time to get to that theater. So you need to give them now 15 minutes to get to that eight o'clock. So now they have to leave at 7.45. 745. Yep. So 6.00. 6.30 to 7.45, that's already, you know, you're down, left it down to what, an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. And okay. not all people eat at the same rate. <laughs> yeah. So, so now yeah. you're doing 120 people right. in uh, now basically an hour. Yeah. Okay. 
you have you need time to cook it. Yeah. Okay. So that's and you got you got to do the appetizer. You need time to do the appetizer. And you need time to do main. the main. Granted, we do both at the same time yep. at this point because we're like that's how we're it's got to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have you need to allow the proteins to rest too. Yeah. You have to think. You have to consider that. So now you're basically also have to give them time for like let's focus on the main course alone. You have to give them time to have dessert too. Yeah. And coffee. Yeah. So now you got to back that up another yeah. 15 yeah. minutes. And you know this is all prefix. You know it's very uh, it's a prefix pre theater menu, um, but you have to remember it's very it's key for a operation like Paul's to try to get all this in there because that's all sales that you need to maximize mm -hmm. within that 40 uh, you know hour and 15 minute window because so, real estate's expensive here and you got to pay it so my thing was i used like cuz i used to i tried to hire chefs to yeah. hire to, to replace me yeah and they could do everything they were some chefs were better than me for dishes they came mm -hmm. out with the but not one of them can handle that pre theater crowd yeah. and re, and it's just a fucking half hour window. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. And nobody could hack it. Yeah. Because base I had to cook for like 120 people in under a half hour right. to get them served. Yeah. And that's that was the magic that I could get done mm -hmm. without a hitch that nobody else could get done. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. We had it down to four. It was uh service. Yeah. It was f I did the math and because I we I actually filmed it once. It was down to an average of four covers every 30 seconds. Hell yeah. Boom. Hell boom, yeah. Boom. And like tickets, like you want that machine go, you know, I ever see the bear and it just goes like that. That was that every fucking pre theater. Because the people put, have multiple stations where they're putting the tickets. You have a lot of stations. We have a lot of stations for such a little restaurant, right? Yep. Yeah, I noticed that. One, two, three. We have five, oh, out six stations to order. For a small capacity, yep. and all and everybody's on the right. and all those tickets come out at the same time, yep. and they're all putting like two, three. Every every waiter had like five to ten tables, yep. so they're putting you know, come on, yeah, it's volume, you know, it's a it was big insane. Yeah. Woo, Woo. Man, that was a story, baby. Loved it, loved it. Speaking of which, I'm not talking the... about my dad because it's always gangster shit. <laughs> it is gangster shit. It is gangster shit. I got so many of those. And you too. know, one more thing I'm going to add before we go back to this is uh, uh, every restaurant would love to get 120 covers spread between four hours. Four That's hours. the oh, dream. Yeah. That's, That's the, dream. the dream. Guess what? Never fucking happens. There is a reason why <laughs> everyone's eating dinner at either six, seven, eight o'clock. Everyone's showing up at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, and there's nothing you can do. And about whatever it. neighborhood you can, you think you're gonna change, yeah. like you go change neighborhood, but the, but all that neighborhood, all the people are acclim acclimated to eating at a certain time too. Right. It doesn't matter where you go. It's yeah. that crunch time is gonna be. There's always a crunch. There's time. always a crunch yeah. time. Like for me, it's lunch yeah. at my shop, my sam, my little sandwich shop. It's just all the people show up at like twelve to <laughs> two thirty. It's lunch. And it's just like bam, and that's all they have. Yeah. They have, they have, they have an hour window, and in that hour window, they need to get there, order, order it, get eat their it, food. get back to yeah. get back to work. Yep. So you technically have half that time to yep. do it. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Do you like my new cup? It's a get fat coffee mug, baby. I like it. Check this. it out. Check it. See. No, it's mine. Where's the other one? I only have one. How do we only have one? Uh, I only asked for one, and it's mine. Did I pay for it? <laughs> Actually, you did it. <laughs> it's a colored version of our T-shirt that's based on our original picture. Yeah. I love how our original picture is a recurring theme. Get Fat Tees are available now for pre-order. Once pre-orders are closed, they are gone for good. There will no longer be any releases of this. There is a bundle where you can get- What are you drinking? The tea. It's, it's sparkling water. No wonder I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a bundle. You can get the Get Fat Tea, the Get Fat Coffee Mug for a cheaper price. But also, if you get the bundle, you get a free sticker as well. Limited edition. And once they're gone, they are gone for good. Frenchie, please tell everybody. Don't you want that? Get Fat Mug. Guys, link in the description below. Get your Get Fat merch today. Anyway, so back to your uh, grilled cock over here. I want to use this you know, to segue. Now, just to, I'm just gonna leave it up. 
But I just, I need to see a comment. Are there comments? Oh, no. Well, let's check it out. Let's no, there are no it. comments. Uh, well, a blondie. Oh, okay. I want. <laughs> she wants my bird. She wants my cock. <laughs> no, just blondie. Oh, good. All right. You know, speaking of uh, the ladies, uh, there's a lot of ladies who like you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Les Chef Paul is so cute. Want to see him shirtless. He should have his own YouTube. Seriously. Well, you know, what are they talking about? Aren't we doing that already? Or well, no, no. They want you to have your own YouTube, but you're just too lazy. So you make me do all the logistical yeah, shit for you. Yeah, that's the fucking point. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you get me. <laughs> we uh, have real jobs besides this. Yes. Well, actually, that. so we spoke about it a little bit of why we're not doing in no rush to do cooking videos. Right. Because because we are operating another full-fledged business that has very low profit margin, should I mention. Mm -hmm. Takes a lot of staff and logistics to make happen on a daily business. And quite honestly, the last thing we want to do is uh, cook more. That's you know? why we ordered all that Chinese yeah, food last yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, but how, that was good. No, that was epic. Uh, let's uh. see, another one have here. Uh, this was from um, podcast episode 0 0.25. <laughs> 0 .2. I, I, <laughs> it's so dumb. I know. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just committing. At this point, I'm just committing to my to my to my stupidity. Anyway, am I the only one that wants to smell Chef Paul? <laughs> there is nothing better than a good smelling I man. I do smell good. You do smell good. I always smell You know, good. we were sharing, our chef coats, we were sharing the same suit bag. Yeah. And I smell like you when yeah. I put on my chef coat. And I gotta say, I don't mind. That's some expensive uh, yeah. cologne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there are people that have been complimenting you on. Uh, oh no, I've always been complimented on my, the way I smell. Is it Bleu de Chanel? Bleu. Bleu. Bleu de Chanel. Bleu de Chanel, yes, yes. You have to Bleu. say it with the French Bleu. pretension. Okay. Bonjour, mignon. How's my pronunci pronunciation? Bonjour, Mignon. Right. Not bad, right? Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it for Paul Love. Let's get <laughs> oh, into damn. some... Uh... I'm not impressed. <laughs> you had me all... I, got, I was building building it up in my head well, here. There, no, no. There is more, but those were the only two that I managed to screenshot. Oh, okay. Because when it was initially happening, I was like, oh, that's cute, and I would skim over oh, okay. it. okay. But like, it's been happening more and more, so I've, I've been screenshotting it. Don't worry. Well, that'll be a new segment. All in Jordan, can you just put it on the screen? Yeah. Paul Love. Paul Love. Heart. No, I always got good attention. Yeah. The, the ladies. <laughs> well, oh, the, man. All right, well, you know. Like the men. I've always, I've, I've been, I've been, when you're gay good looking, that's when you're hot. I used to be gay good looking. <laughs> Not anymore. But I used to be, well, now I'm like more of a bear. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're definitely more of a bear. More of a bear. Mm. Mm. You know, I used to be an otter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you know, you got a lot of love, but we, we, we have been getting some hate about our opinions on. I don't want, I don't need to see this. Hate. You don't want to see this? No. no. Hate? Yeah, a little bit of hate. There's enough hate in the world. Why do yeah, I, there is. why is that well, bring you know, shit? I, I found this comment. I thought it was quite eloquent. Okay. Seeing some of the comments, I got to wonder if it's just going to be some rich dude trying to justify the horrible practices in the service industry, because it's what they're used to. If you weren't rich, you wouldn't own restaurants where you do. You don't. <laughs> Wait a second. You're saying only rich people open up restaurants? Is that his yeah, assumption? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, well, the thing is, there's no rich people. The last thing rich people do is open up restaurants. Right. Well, well, the many rich people, there are no operators of restaurants that are rich. <laughs> Let me put it that way, okay? Let me tell you something. The profit margins on restaurants are slim. The people that are making bank are the ones that can afford to expand and open a big, like many of them, Yeah. right? And because many of them are generating profit, it combines yeah, to be a it, decent- It becomes like yeah. you get, you're collecting a lot of small salaries. Right, right, more or less. But it, it's that's so rare. That's very rare. The success of even a restaurant being successful, even is like like five percent to last the year. Yeah, it's five. I think it's even less to to last five years. Mm -hmm. It's nah, the, no. The success the rate on restaurants yeah. is pitiful. If you have a successful restaurant and you own one restaurant, let me tell you what you can look forward to. A salary, salary, maybe a car mm -hmm. that functions, uh, possibly pay your mortgage, but not 
not much past that. Right. You know, at least in New York City. At least in New or York, New York City. City. Yeah. No. No. In New York City? Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 You actually, in New York City, if you're a successful operator of one restaurant, you're not paying a mortgage because you can't afford a house. You're <laughs> you're affording your rent. Yeah. Um, I think there is a huge misconception of how much restaurant operators actually yeah. make. Um, because like there's so compare, much You gross. can't compare us or like an individual owning a restaurant and a corporation right, owning a restaurant. Right. Those are two completely that's different models. That's different. That's yeah. like Disney. That's, yeah. you know, no, that's 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 and, a different concept. And like concept. you said, they're very few and far between. Yeah. But, you know, you have other businesses outside of the yes. restaurant yeah. that is, you know, leading to you being very financially successful. Yeah, right? but it took me half a century to right, get there. Right, but it's not just on the restaurant. Let's let's make that very clear. No, yeah, definitely. Not. So for for all of you who think like Paul is this loaded restaurant owner because of the restaurant, no, he was no. just he worked his ass off and invested into other things. Which is I'm trying to, you know, as much as I give shit to Paul about how old he right is. Right now you know, he's investing in me <laughs> <laughs> and real estate. But anyway, um, so let, let's keep going on because this guy has yet to put a period in his sentence. Yeah, a run on. I was going to say yeah. run on. Yeah. Uh, if you weren't rich, you wouldn't own restaurants where you do. Don't play the we ain't rich game. Oh, well, we just did. Period. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 we just did. Uh, so you're supposed to make up the minimum wage if they don't get enough tips. How do you determine that? <laughs> First of all, we sign the checks <laughs> and we have to calculate how much money they make based on how many hours they work. And right. if the employee remembers to fucking clock in and clock out, <laughs> we know how much they're making an hour based on the gross of their paycheck. And if that gross does not equal mm -hmm. to what minimum wage should be, not server minimum wage, because that's different. If the amount of tips that they collect plus their server minimum wage doesn't equal, let's just call it regular minimum wage, guess who's liable to cover the rest of that? The business. Just so you know, just so we're very clear. Now, are they making big, big bank, quote unquote, livable wage at that point? No, but it is minimum wage, you know? Right. I mean, you know, it's so uh, some places but it, you, you but get- But it's the type of like, it's the, t again, there are levels yeah. of wait staff. Yeah. You know, yeah. we can go from diner to high end. Yeah. And I know some waiters that work maybe one or two nights a week only. Yeah. And they make more money than I do. Yeah, yeah. And listen, we're not saying we don't want back of the house getting <laughs> tips. Trust me, if we could make yeah. that happen, we would do it in a fucking heartbeat. Yep. Trust me. But it is against the, the law. law. So it is not happening. And I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. No, and then and then and then they get like, <clears throat> okay, so okay, tell us, tell us, tell us how much these people should be paid an hour. Right, right. And I guarantee you, it was it is it it's like minimum wage is what, fifteen? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, regular minimum wage in okay. New York. So $15. we have to guarantee fifteen. Yeah. So uh, okay, how much do I? Is it twenty, thirty, forty? Fifty a dollars right. an hour. Right. So is the because I guarantee you those waiters are gonna say no because they can make more than that. Right, right. Uh, is a diner waiter? Uh, you know, uh, some diner waiters make a lot of money. But oh, let's yeah. just let's just say a slow restaurant. Right, mm -hmm. thirty dollars an hour sounds dope as fuck. Yeah, and then you have someone who's working at um, I don't know. Let's uh, let's say a steakhouse where the starting price is gonna be about sixty to seventy dollars right. per head before beverage. Mm -hmm. There if you tell them, hey, we're gonna stop tipping you and now we're gonna give you thirty dollars an, an hour, hour they're, they're going to out. fucking <laughs> laugh in your face and say, Great joke, let's get to work. It's not happening. Not just happening. Not happening. That that's just that's just ignorance. I'm sorry, yeah, but no, that's no. like you I just wanted to clarify a couple things, you know. Uh, yeah. I don't think that yeah. person's gonna understand. He, he's saying like six or seven things in this one paragraph, <laughs> but it kind of like sums up what a lot of people are saying in the comments. And you know, we were talking so off the cuff when we were reacting to that Lewis. It's such a nerve video. with you that we're even bothering to do this. Yeah, it did, because you know, I Yeah, but if people don't like they haven't you know, they're just com like, but this is this is the internet. People yeah. comment on shit they, yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. know. No, no, listen, I'm I'm all for them commenting on it. This oh. is we're just making content out of them commenting yeah, if, to our. If content, we're gonna have to good. like f like validate all like 
No, no. Even when we're wrong. So what? Yeah, yeah. No, no, dude. It's it's totally good. It's just it's fun. Okay. This is fun. It's fun. It's fun. I'm having fun. I'm definitely having Okey fun. Okie dokie. He's having fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Lots of room for dishonesty. A lot of room for victimization. <laughs> Just because you're nice doesn't mean everyone is. One of the reasons Lewis moved to Texas is that New York put a lien on his business. He didn't owe and for years sent his notices to a random P.O. box in Boston where at the time you they started me. sending what? things. To, I have no fucking idea. what. <laughs> you lost me. Like, why? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's move. Can we yeah. please yeah. move okay. on? All right. All right. Uh, let's see. We got some good viewer questions on a previous podcast episode. Chefs, I have a question. This was from uh, our pink sauce later. Pink sauce lady ruined her life. And what is a restaurant episode okay, where we where I first introduced you introduced you to Pink Sauce Lady. Chefs, I have a question. I watch a lot of Shark Tank and Dragon's Den, and people are always making things in their homes, uh, home kitchens, and selling it. No one seems repulsed by it. I am, however. Can all these entrepreneurs possibly be in trouble? I've never heard of anyone getting sick, but I have a feeling there were. We just didn't hear about it. Thanks and love you guys. Well, we love you too, Joanna Sunday. And yes, it only takes one person. Yeah to get sick to make you to like shut you down. Yeah, there's also a lot of variables in this question because it depends what they're selling. If it's something that's naturally very shelf stable, like something that has a lot of sugar or a lot honey. of salt. Yeah, honey is shelf stable. You're you're not going to have to really worry much about it, you know, going off. But something like the pink sauce which per, you know, is very clear has dairy in it. Um is a breeding ground for bacteria and viruses, and it will expand. And guess where this stuff expands the most? Pretty much a little above room temperature. So if the if the containers you're pouring the product in is not sterile, that increases your chances of it going off. If the product you're starting with is uh, not shelf stable, something like dairy, uh, it'll also greatly increase uh, increase your chances of it going off. So it, de <laughs> fuck you, man. It just depends. It depends. Do you have anything to add, Frenchie, no, since we, I'm putting we, you to sleep? We did to, to death. All right. So again, it just depends. If it's like a jam, if it's like a honey, you're fine for the most part. And yes, I do agree with you. You probably don't hear about it. Boring content. Oh God, you are such a fucking asshole sometimes. Decipher, also from the Pink Sauce Lady Ruined Her Life episode, asks, was actually wanted to know more about the restaurant topic. What makes and break a restaurant? The ratings, food direction, and how it shaped the restaurant direction, and many more. The education part would be cool with the hint of, of fun, fun stuff. Just me opinion. Shout out from your Malaysian viewer. Ah, my wife is Malaysian. I feel so at home with Malaysians. You got that for the most part, right? So what can break a restaurant? Yeah. Bad food. <laughs> but you can have a restaurant with good food that doesn't make it as well. Oh, yeah. More often than. Yeah. More often than not. There's mm -hmm. plenty of places. We were. We touched upon this topic a little bit and uh, how I, I was saying I've come to realize more and more that uh, a lot of chef restaurant operators are fucking morons. They don't know what they're doing. And I say this as a guy who did not know what he was doing uh, until I brought on a consultant and uh, had him help me <laughs> shape things up. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 on, on Raw, I, I'm pretty forward about this, you know, like, as far as food quality, production of it, consistency, I got that down pat. But as far as being a business owner, I definitely had my shortcomings and the consultant we brought on, shout out to Michael Shane, Great Hands Hospitality Consultants, um, showed you, me the way. Do you smell popcorn? No. No, take a no. deep breath. Uh, maybe it's the hand soap. No, take a deep breath. <laughs> Did you fucking <laughs> fart? <laughs> Fuck you, man. What the hell is wrong with you? God damn it. I just inhaled it. That's pretty good. 
That was pretty good. <sighs> oh, I hate you so bad. Oh, I can taste it now. <laughs> Oh, Blondie's gonna that she's we lost Blondie again. She fucking hates this like with a passion. <laughs> like like yeah, even the, she hates even the mention of it. She's like, no. All no. right. Dis decipher, I'm sorry we didn't go into super detail because I just inhaled fucking <laughs> Frenchie's ass essence. <laughs> I, I can't answer this question further. Listen, um, all of the above. That, that's all I'm going to say to you. There are, yeah. low. it could be location. It could be the demographics. You're trying to serve something that's cutting edge in an area that has an older clientele and wants something a bit more Listen, basic. Listen, like the most successful uh, <clears throat> restaurant operators have been jacks of all trade, master of none, but still better than master of none. Is that how it goes? I think you fucked that up. I fucked it up. Jacks of all trade. Yeah. Like, if you know a little bit of everything. Um, experience. Experience. Repetition. Like, you know, the most successful restaurant operators I've seen have either gone through every fucking position in a restaurant. Yeah. Front to back. Not just all of the back and all of the front. That's what she said. <laughs> Because how many times oh, have I'm, I met I'm, I'm sorry. With jokes like that, there's a reason why 98% of our audience is male. I just want you to know that. Really? 98% yeah. of it is male? Yeah, it's like over 90% is male. Oh man. Yeah. You just burst my bubble now. Yeah, yeah. well, it's I because of fucking jokes like that. All the best chefs I've met in my career have been lousy businessmen. Mm. Not that I'm not the best chef. I'm right. a great businessman too. Yeah. All right. So hope that answers your question, Decipher. No, that didn't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a viewer comment also throwing us some shade, but they had a question, so I wanted to answer it. Okay. Suzanne Baxter asks, who cares if you hate how us Brits cook our food? <laughs> what that's the hell has it got to do with you? Oh, that's great. I like that. I am getting mighty salty about all these reactor channels dissing on us for our food, and especially the Americans who eat food that is banned in the rest of the world. I will say her grammar's excellent, yes. and she is very eloquent. And truthful. That is that is a fact. Yeah, that is a fact. That is a fact. Jamie Oliver, I cannot stand. We have common ground. Uh, it was the Americans who started all this crap about British food. Been so awful. Oh, she's suddenly uh, getting she into. Just lost. A, yeah, she no, she's getting into a bonix now. Uh, in 1941 to nine uh, to 42, when the Yanks were stationed over here, they started it, but our entire country was on rations. I'm sorry. What, what's what excuse do you have for today when you go there today? <laughs> Are you still are you still eating rations? Because that's what it is. It's still the same level. And there are I can hear the clicks from across the pond of a bunch of people from the UK hating on us. It's okay. It's all right. Listen, but the this the, the, but that's the thing. Like they there are categories <clears throat> of of foods in the United States. Mm -hmm. You can go to unhealthy to epitome of the best of the best, right? Mm -hmm. And that's true for most countries. In England, it's just bad all over. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Gordon Ramsay, apparently. I've actually never been to any of his restaurants. No. I am a massive fan, but I've never been. He is surprisingly uh, a kind man. Yeah? Yeah. You've met him? Yeah. I've well, if you watch the UK version of Kitchen Nightmares, he's awesome. Yeah, he's he great. doesn't he barely yells. And he's eloquent. He, he, you know, he He was asked to be the heel yeah, on the show. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that's wrestling. That's yeah. pro wrestling. You know? Yeah, yeah. I had yeah. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not with much effort though. All right. Uh those on our Discord, they ask, of all the people you cover negatively, who do you feel bad about criticizing or is just aimed or is just aimed at the food? Do we well, feel bad about who, criticizing anybody? No, 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 not at all. Own your shit. You, uh, yeah, own your shit like we do. Yeah, own your we shit. We clearly tell you we are morons. We yeah. stay, we fully stand behind that we are morons. Okay. Uh, that, that doesn't mean we're not too important to apologize. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But also, if you're but putting I'm not going to apologize for 
you know, if, if I'm right, I'm not apologizing. Right. And also, if you're putting the shit on the internet, sorry, you just opened yourself up yeah. to the to the lashings. It's just that it is. plain it is. and simple. It is fact. what it is. Yeah, this it is, is old it, news, yeah. old news. All right. Uh, are there any videos you've been asked to react to that you don't want to absolutely refuse to? Well, there are many that he would really prefer not to that I purposely put in front of his face just to piss him off. Peas. <laughs> Peace. All right. Uh, this is a good question. What is your opinion on family meal slash staff meals for employees? Be it they get something off the menu or it's a set uh, pre slash post service uh, service meal service family service with one of the cooks banging out some for the crew with the leftover prep stuff. Oh, I actually like this. I like yeah. that we're touching on this. Yeah. Because family meal at the restaurant was the best part of the fucking day. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. And a, a, a properly done family meal as we yeah. had done it here. And it was like the main staple yeah. that my uncles and my dad enforced throughout their whole careers. Yeah. At a certain time, everybody stops working. And every single person in the restaurant that works there, from the owner, the chef, to the busboy, sit at one big communal table. And that's the moment where, like, that's that's that that's the break. That's yeah. like you get to enjoy that. Yeah. As that's where you mend fences. Right. It's where you can it's where you eat. Yeah. <laughs> it's where you get your energy from. Yeah. And and it's and it's just fun. It's yeah. fun. It's like like that, like like that. When you got together at the school cafeteria, you're looking forward to like getting all your friends together, and yep. then like you know you can focus on each other without it being work, mm -hmm. right? And it's it's downtime. It's downtime. Yeah. Ooh, the fuck is that a fruit fly? Uh oh. Fuck! I told you not to leave garbage here. I don't leave garbage anyway, here. So it's crucial to also create team right. effort, yeah. and it's and you're building up your team by having everybody there, yeah. and you can spot right away like if someone's upset or sad right. or some or someone's not up to their usual self you see that you see it you yeah. see it there so that you know if a smart owner or a chef or or boss is going to spot it right away you yeah. know what i mean that's beautiful i love that uh unfortunately i never really got to experience that in any oh. of the places i worked it was the but you better show up on fucking time because if you're late you get no fucking food yeah. Yeah. it's all yeah. gone oh, yeah. it's all gone yeah and as yeah, to yeah. what what you would cook like right. what like like you know it's usually some, a time to flex for some cooks yes yeah. yeah i always used family meal for chefs to like oh you want to do a new special make it for everybody today right yeah oh oh um but like my guys have been there for so long mm -hmm. so it's 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 changed right so we i don't have to do that anymore and you would think i said i i give them carte blanche they can cook whatever they want yeah they can cook whatever they want they could, you know, and the me menu is extensive as in po the possibilities of creations. Mm -hmm. No, they like they create all their all the comfort foods. Mm -hmm. It's usually like all the all the stuff that like that when the customers see it on the table, if they walk in, they're like, "What the fuck is that?" And yeah. how come we're not eating that? Right. right. It's that type of food. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have worked at one place where there was a communal family meal, but because I was the newest guy, I was the uh, intern, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, the chef like told me, no, you don't get to sit down and eat. So I remember that, that kind of sucked. Uh, and then there was another place I worked. The hourly staff was allowed to go on a communal family meal, but the salaried staff, i.e. me and my sous Wait, chefs. And you just said salaried staff. Oh, I'm sorry. The hourly staff okay. would be able to go clock out and go on a communal family meal, mm -hmm. uh, staff meal, right? But all the salaried staff had to stay working, like basically stand and eat in the kitchen. I'm not going to say where, but but I don't understand the reasoning behind it, it either. It, I don't know. It was I was the head chef there, but it was built in like that. So mm. yeah, it was it it was. It looks it was, like you missed an opportunity to change some yeah, rules. Yeah, I was not changing anything there. Oh, okay, it's a, it was a big machine. That's oh. all I'm going to say. Fuck you! <laughs> don't. <laughs> 
Oh, and then uh, it doesn't my... take much to figure you out, yeah, Brian. Yeah. Uh, but then at the current shop that I I have, uh, we literally don't have it anywhere for you to. For, first of all, we don't stop service. Right. You know, it's open all the time, but the place is very small, so there's literally nowhere we could do a communal thing unless we close down the shop, which unfortunately doesn't happen. So for my shop, we allow you to take home. Have you been here when you the, they do family meal? Mm. I know, I, yes, but I mean, I didn't join the family meal. Oh, because yeah. you use it, they use that whole back room. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. nice. Yeah, it's nice. You know? yeah, yeah. It I've used to it. be when there were, when it used to be alongside the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the one wall, but then that, in the old restaurants, the tables were bigger. Like you could mm -hmm. do that. You could like put, but and these tables are so skinny. So it's like only these people are talking to each other, and these people mm -hmm. are talking to each other. So the conversation wasn't great. Mm -hmm. And and then sometimes the noise level would like it's com competing mm -hmm. in the back room. And since it's like one little room right. and everybody's filling up the room, like everybody can yeah. like yeah, yeah. communicate with everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. like that's I always. Nice. That's, that's like. Nice. Uh, like you ever go to those party and like people are upset where they're sitting? Yeah. Like you can only talk to the people next to you anyway. Right. So what do you care? Right. You know. At my shop, uh, the staff get to choose whatever sandwich off the menu and or make whatever they want. You know? Yeah. But uh, we also like it is a small space. So and like, don't you find that like like if you trust people to eat whatever they want, they don't abuse it? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. That's mostly the yeah, case. Yeah. I'm I'm very lucky. I don't have that issue of people. Uh, well, anyone who was abusing shit like that is gone now. I, I did have to take off one ingredient off of uh because i didn't realize because but like they were doing hanger steaks or family meal oh, shit. and like like yeah i yeah, could yeah. afford it yeah but then all of a sudden prices went to like like astronomical ridiculous absurd mm. pricing and i hadn't caught up and i was like oh we, we, we can't do this anymore <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're literally losing money yeah is hanger steaks back down yeah oh okay it's back down. they're still expensive yeah I mean, you know, they definitely have gone up over the years. I mean, but that was a throwaway actually, they're, cut. They're before. actually still more expensive than sirloin. Really? Yeah. But you catch up on hanger steak because yeah. you give a smaller portion on right. the hanger steak. Right. So you, so you get, you know, a sirloin usually a minimum size is fourteen ounces, right. and a hanger steak will be eight ounces. Right. And you know? in that case, so where some of the economics work to your benefit with the sirloin is that you're taking in more gross. Yeah right uh because of that so um all right cool let's do one more from the discord server oh this is pretty simple what is your favorite tea tea yeah tea um tea isn't tea bagging <laughs> no i don't have a fucking favorite tea who has a fucking favorite tea I have a favorite tea. What's your favorite tea? Oolong. It's the tea that you get at the Chinese restaurants. It just reminds me of my childhood. It's nostalgia. It's the cheapest tea. It's, oh. it's, it's, it's There's nothing special about it. And I do, but it's not a tea. Okay. All right. Well, it's chamomile. Oh, it, it reminds okay. me of my grandma because mm. mm. she used to literally collect chamomile and, and oh. brew it. All right. So you do have a tea. Oh, I do have a tea. That's sweet. That was oh, a nice answer. Fuck. Yeah. All right. Let's leave it at that. That's a good way to end the episode on a on a on a nice sweet note. On a mushy note? No. <laughs> no. What? We're not we're not stopping. No, we got um, not on my and on a, on a sappy note. No, I thought that was nice. All right, all right. I like Discord. I like chaos. Where's this podcast? Is it an actual podcast or what passes? for them on the YouTubes. Well, it's here now. You can go to uh, so you want to get fat.com or stream it on all audio streaming platforms where it will now be available by the time this episode comes out. Also on YouTube, so check it out. Wait, you said all audio platforms? Yeah, Spotify. And you can't watch yeah. it on Spotify? No. How come you can watch Rogan on Spotify? Because that's Joe Rogan. But you, and you can also watch um, Bill Mara. On, Sp on Spotify. Us and Bill Maher and Joe Rogan are on very different levels. Of I'm the one total degree pole. of separation. Okay, that's you. Make it happen, bitch. Oh, no. <laughs> that's the one way of guaranteeing I'm not being on the show. <laughs> I'll tell you that. What would your two's ideal location be, assuming money and such weren't an issue? Dream shop, as it were. Oh, fucking bar on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Tea, cocktail bar on the beach. And then the other one, uh, at, uh, I don't ski, but like I always thought that those picturesque, you know, like mm. high, 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 Ooh, those 
picturesque views of the, like the snow capped mountains. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. fucking insane. Yeah, I don't have a better answer than that. That's pretty fucking dope. No, yeah, I'm going with your with you uh what's your favorite malaysian dish i want to wait to answer this when i take you to a malaysian restaurant okay. because it seems like I, I don't i'm is it are there obvious malaysian dishes i, sh I should know about yeah like uh, satay roti chanai okay maybe curry singapore curry laksa stuff like that i'll take you to eat all that Aki stuff doki, yeah, yeah. on an, another episode of feasty boys uh let's see uh do you prefer young kimchi or old kimchi we were talking a little bit about this today what did we eat today that and was i'll tell you exactly oh, that is my answer yeah, the old kimchi oh, oh, oh. <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna have to experiment with some new kimchi because holy fuck holy fucking bubbles <laughs> is there a celebrity chef you don't like jamie oliver gets a bad deal so ignore him no commas no nothing all right is there any celebrity chef we don't like of course yeah who is it mm -hmm. yeah i don't think we can answer that yeah it's, isn't it obvious <laughs> isn't it <laughs> obvious it's somebody that frenchie and i bonded over yeah yeah let's keep it at that okay it's the reason why you and i are now together and in then, this union and then there's there's a ton of celebrity chefs out there that like like behind the scenes they're just not good pieces people. of shit oh there's one person i really don't fucking like she is a bitch and i'm not gonna say who but she was so so mean to me when i saw her at a chef's party kind shelly no no she was actually nice oh, okay yeah yeah Ooh. i'll tell you off <laughs> it is yeah, of yeah. course it's <laughs> you gotta you're gonna have to bleep that out yeah yeah we're gonna have to bleep i'm already that out. on yeah yeah i'm already feuding with her so oh are you yeah yeah she mm. she's a bitch she's yeah she is mean she is yeah. really mean i'll tell you what happened okay but we're you know we bleep you out have the to name. bleep her these names yeah, out. yeah no 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 we're, we're, we're bleeping Oof. out the names yes uh have to bleep out the names i'm sorry uh so this particular person i saw at one of these james beard chef parties mm. And uh, I saw her and, you know, I said, hey, you know, nice to meet you. Like, I don't know if you remember me, yada, yada, yada. And then I was and I thanked her for something that she did for me that and I and then she clearly didn't remember me. And this was her reply because I tapped her on the shoulder. She turned around. She literally like, so you're me. You tapped me and she turns around and she goes and turns around like that. Yeah, she's it's just. She's fucking a, she is. sorry you have to bleep that out too yeah nah she's uh, a bitch yeah it really is yeah she's very she's like she did like she, very fake she, fake and yeah. like you she like she hasn't learned a hard lesson like she's that like you know that fame she's she's run her course very well yeah but like enough of that gets back it it's like yeah. It's going to go down quick. Uh, she's another one who doesn't know how to operate restaurants. Oh, oh she's a big zero. Yeah. Big zero. And yeah. she she partnered up with a good friend of mine, and she fucked him good. Oh, oh my God. He, he a lot of people, everybody who's worked with her yeah. despises yeah. her. And let me tell you something. She is not the person she portrays oh, on no. camera. Like, not even fucking Not even close. close. Yeah. All right. Um... Uh, the opposite of that. Are there any you look up to? Oh, yeah. Damn. I love my mentor, mm. Jacques Torres. Mm. Um, I finally have grown to, like, appreciate Danielle. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, like, my first professional boss mm -hmm. outside of the family. Um, he gave me a rough time of it. But, and then John George, mm. I really respect uh, Lamonico, you know, Lamonico, you know, another person like who's been through the ringer. You know what I mean? I mean, it's very obvious. I don't, we don't need to do, delve into that. Yeah. Um, I have, of, of course, my peers that I love, you know, uh, Harold Moore. Harold Moore is a good chef and a good person. Mm -hmm. there, you know, most chef come out are good people mm -hmm. because to to want to do that that type of job yeah like anybody who feeds people <clears throat> tends to be a good person yeah yeah you or I mean? a real piece of shit yeah but yeah. those are the, the pieces of shit are <laughs> obvious because they're far and few right. right but and they just get more attention right. right right you know what i mean and they get the rap and then 
So, but no, but I would say the majority of the people in this business are kind people. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. yeah. Really, really. Uh, I'm going to shout out Vinny Barcelona. How do I know Vinny Barcelona? Vinny Barcelona, he's uh, the corporate chef, chef at Stratus Foods. Was uh, they recently took over Admiration? Okay, Vinny, you, you, he would be at the dinners with us with the men who died. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, little uh, senior moment there. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah. All right. And then operate. You know, Chris Cannon. Yeah, is a good good friend of mine. You know, Michael White. You know, not the wrestler Chris Cannon. No, for all my wrestling fans out you there, you know who I really respect and and had a, like in his kindness is comes out through his food is Michael Toscano. Do you remember Michael Toscano? I know the name. Yeah. I do not know Michael. You Toscano. Know, I like him. Yeah. Listen, all the a, a lot of these people you're naming, I know who they are. I don't know them personally. Yeah. I don't. These are you know. these are the high. This is the top. These are the one percenters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's who I hang out with, dude. Last question, and we're <laughs> wrapping it up. Will you collab with other YouTubers other than Frenchie yes. and Guga? Yes. Oh, what? other than me? <laughs> Fuck you, no. <laughs> now I'm here to stay. Now I'm invested. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean, other? I don't think they realize that, like, this is questions for both, because this is my Discord server. We have to start one for, oh, okay. so you want to get fat. You know, okay, okay. Uh, I I did say like I want more ask me anything questions for us, but you know, um, listen, I would love to uh, collab with more with other food YouTubers. Will it happen? That's not up to me. If I'm gonna be honest, mm. we'll see where this all goes. Yeah, yeah. we're right now we're in the in the yeah. in the begging phase. Yeah, yeah, we're in the begging <laughs> phase. And, and honestly, between running our businesses and our families, yeah. we don't have time to beg, and we're not going to you know, beg. I so. mean, I'm I have the luxury we can get a lot of chefs yeah. on board. Yeah, that we can do. Yeah. And but that, they don't have YouTube channels. No, and and that'll be entertaining as yeah. fuck. We yeah. know that. Yeah, you know, you know, Guga was. Let me make something very clear. And if you know, if, if we're talking about uh, people that we adore, you know, Guga. Guga, Guga doesn't call himself a chef, but he's certainly been a fucking sensei to me. You know, he's been yeah. a mentor to me. He's he's awesome. And uh, I would I put would, him in a steakhouse, and you'll be a fucking chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 100%. like who doesn't he? Uh, like yeah. he'll cook a fucking steak for you. Yeah. But uh, you know, Guga is uh, the exception to the rule. He definitely has been very gracious to me. He was. Very kind to comment on my videos at the early stage of my uh, YouTube career. He's definitely of the mentality of like high tide raises all yes, boats. Yes, thousand percent. I think definitely m more so than any other. Yeah, you know, food YouTuber. And I've actually there. seen it. So yeah. Good yeah, to yeah. go. Hey everyone, I want to interrupt your episode today to bring you a little fun segment I call "How French Is Frenchy?" And we're gonna find out with this my heritage. DNA kit, and guess what? We got Frenchie right here. You ready, buddy? Okay. All right, let's do this. Okay, you ready? <laughs> oh God, no! First, activate your kit online. Open the test kit and lay out everything on a clean surface. Take one of the swabs from the wrapper and use it to scrape the inside of one of your cheeks. Open up one of the vials and insert the swab, swab end down, and make sure it touches the bottom. Give it a little stir and break it off. Repeat the whole process with another swab on the other cheek. Make sure both vials are closed tightly, placed into the clear Ziploc bag, and that now goes into the addressed envelope. Mail out the envelope to MyHeritage's DNA lab. We did the MyHeritage DNA. We wanted to see how French is Fren Frenchy. So you ready, buddy? Because yeah, we've I've got been getting a lot of hate. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh yeah, no one believes that you're French. Right. Everyone thinks you're Jewish. Or Italian. Or Italian. Or from the Bronx. <laughs> Let's go, buddy. Let's see how French Frenchy really is. Okay. Paul is... Wait, did you make a video? No, this is their... 39% Italian? 25% <laughs> Irish, Scotch, and Welsh? Oh my God. No, that's... 22% North and West European. What does that mean? 13.5% Iberian. Spanish? What? Whoa. I don't see. I mean, the purple is uh, 22. Yes, yeah, France, Germany, 
Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium. The majority is Italian? The majority is Italian. Maybe that's why you tan so easily. <laughs> Wait a second. Dude, I w I'm shocked by this. This is kind of awesome. Okay, well, it makes sense that the majority of my genetics is Iberian and North. So you put those together, that's like uh, 30, whatever, 35%. Yeah, yeah Iberian is Spanish. Oh, right, right. It makes, yeah, yeah. It makes sense because right. in the Pyrenees <laughs> Mountains, we're on the border of Spain, right? So, okay. okay. So those two connect. Okay, but this Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. Now we're going to get, I'm going to get for this. You are. You know what? My passport says I'm French. Right now, my heritage has an awesome deal on DNA kits for only $33, soon to go up to $36. So make sure you grab this up now because it makes an awesome holiday gift. Click the link in the description below and use the coupon code CHEF for free shipping in addition to the awesome price of $33. Make sure you get your DNA kit today. All right, this has been an awesome episode, Frenchie. Before we sign off, let's remind everyone, if you're not, please subscribe. Make sure Why are these people not subscribing? They don't like us. And you know how you, you can like, show- You don't like Frenchie? You know how you can show you like Frenchie? You can subscribe, so please do. Before we sign off, uh, let's uh, shout out our restaurants, Mission Sandwich Social, located in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. But we are filming this podcast from where? La Rivage. Which is located? At 340 West 46th Street, New York, New York, baby. Now remember, if you come to La Rivage, Make sure you let them know when yeah. you get here, not in the after. reservation. Yeah. When you, at the very least, when you get here, yeah, do that, please. Yes. All right, guys. It won't go unnoticed. Hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did making it. And remember, don't be afraid to fail, cause it can only make you stronger. With that said, I'm Chef Brian Sound, not your typical chef. Ah, uh, Frenchie, loser of season one of Beat Bobby Flay. <laughs> <laughs>